Hi, everybody, and welcome back. Uh, on Tuesday, as promised, uh, we have another update for our community information uh, update here. And with us today, uh, we have the mayor, Brian Taylor, and myself, Rolly Russell, as well as a couple of guests. We have uh, Mark Stevens, who is the manager of emergency programs at the RD, as well as this week, the director for the Emergency Operations Center, and Diane Langman, who is the chair of the regional district, uh, Kootenai Boundary. And so we had heard uh, some requests around uh, just having a better understanding of the, the scope and the current operations of the Emergency Operations Center regionally, how that fits in with the provincial uh, situation currently. And so without further ado, I will turn it over to Diane Langman. Thanks, Rolly. I'm Diane Langman. I'm the mayor of the village of Warfield, and I'm also the chair of the regional district of Kootenai Foundry. On behalf of our entire board of directors for Kootenai Foundry, I just want to say we're all in this situation together. We need to support one another, and we'll get through this very challenging and strange time. We're a resilient group. The Boundary, for example, has been through a great deal the last number of years. And your community, out of necessity, has developed the strength, experience, and skills to address the challenges that are in front of us. My job as the Regional District Chair is to work with all our local directors. And I'll do everything I can to make sure our residents in the Kootenai Boundary continue to receive the services that you need and you're kept informed. Our emergency operations center is activated at a, at a level two and our emergency management staff will keep you informed of both the pandemic response, but also the 2020 freshet. We're lucky to have today with us, Mr. Mark Stevens, who is the interim manager of emergency programs and works very closely with Chris Marsh and also chief Dan Derby of Kootenai Boundary Regional Fire Rescue. So I'll turn it over to Mark to speak to what is what is an EOC and what is the regional district doing. Hi everyone, and uh, thank you for the introduction, uh, Chair Langman and uh, Director Russell. Uh, I am Mark Stevens. I'm the EOC director uh, this week uh, in our Emergency Operations Center. I want to quickly talk to you about uh, what an EOC is and what we're currently working on in on it. So uh, EOC it stands for Emergency Operations Center. Um, it is a, is a location where traditionally a group of highly trained and qualified per, uh, people work together to support the site level response. However, currently uh, this looks a little bit different with social distancing and everyone working from uh, remote locations. Uh, there are different levels of activation. We have uh, levels one through three. Uh, currently, uh, the RDKB is activated at the level one or level two, sorry. Uh, these levels uh, correspond to the number of people that are required in the EOC to actually uh, support the emergency. Uh, so in terms of our COVID-19 response, uh, pandemics are the jurisdiction of the local health authorities. So the RDKB's Emergency Operations Center role is very much one of uh, communication and, and uh, supporting uh, the, the lead agency. Uh, our current, our EOC staff are in daily communications with uh, interior health authority personnel and also emergency management of British Columbia personnel as well. Uh, to uh, determine best ways that we can support and communicate with our residents. Um, we are updating our emergency website on a daily basis, emergency.rdkb.com. Uh, we update it uh, just about every day with the actions of the EOC in the current situation. Uh, this is where you'll find the most current and up-to-date information for all emergencies across uh, the regional district of Kootenai Boundary. Uh, we're also in uh, pre-planning for the um, 2020 uh, possible freshet season. Um, we're working closely with our, our, our municipal partners like the City of Grand Forks. Um, we've been undertaking uh, pre-planning activities uh, for any potential high waters. Uh, after the flooding of 2018, the RDKB and our municipal partners developed a flood response plan in partnership with emergency response and hydrological professionals. As well, the RDKB emergency program has been in constant contact with subject matter experts within the provincial government um, in regards to flooding risks and forecasts uh, for the upcoming months. As well, we think uh, uh, as well when we think about flattening the curve of COVID-19 uh, spots, uh, things like group lodging and emergency support services uh, will have additional constraints and restrictions. Okay. Uh, we're working with our, our partners in the community as well as Canadian Red Cross to ensure that residents are not exposed to any additional risks uh, if they required uh, if they require support around flooding or any other emergency. Uh, personal preparedness is a more is a even more critical. Uh, for freshet planning this year than ever. 
Uh, this is the time for everyone to take responsibility for personal preparedness and for fresh act planning uh, for private property. Considering what impact high water may have or has had on this personal property to improve uh, is important and to improve upon our, uh, sorry, uh, and in taking steps to prevent the damage um, that, is, uh, that this could be is critical. Uh, the City of Grand Forks and the Regional District City Boundary are asking uh, asking you to think about what your plan is going to look like this year for your family, your pets, and your property. Everyone has a lot to think about right now and during uh, during this pandemic. That, that said, uh, you may be able, uh, may be at home and be able to spend some time and uh, think about personal preparedness uh, for the 2020 first pet and all emergencies. I encourage you to go to emergency.rdkb.com and begin your household emergency preparedness plan. And with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Mayor Taylor. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mark and Roly and Diane. Uh, let me begin with saying that uh, this is not the time to drop our guard. As many of you have heard, we are having some impact on flattening the curve, but this is the time to uh, be even more diligent on that, uh, on that front. We must assume that the virus is amongst us at all time and continue that distancing. I'd like to, to give a, a special thank you to all the healthcare workers and the essential service workers in the food industry, in the healthcare industry, in the transportation industry. Those are the people that are keeping us at this point in time supplied with essential things of life. Uh, on the uh, uh, coming Thursday, we will be meeting again. We'll be back here with more information. I just like to encourage everyone to keep their distance and to keep doing what they're doing. I'm, I'm certainly seeing that in Grand Forks at this point, uh, there is distancing going on and, and people are taking it extremely serious. So thank you uh, to all the participants today, Diane, Rowley, and Mark. Uh, 